Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll just give this a few seconds here and see if anyone would like to jump on the video. Also, if you're here and you'd like to say hello, uh, please put your name and maybe your location in the comment section. All right, I think we can go ahead and get started here. Uh, so my name is Kate Hansen. I am a policy assistant with the Center for Rural Affairs, and I'm one of four staff based in central Iowa, Nevada. Um, and today I'm here to talk a bit about a new guide that we've released on the topic of crop insurance for organic grain operations. So I'll talk a bit about the guide and then also give a sampling of some of the topics that it covers. So we know that risk management is crucial for any farming or ranching operation and crop insurance is sort of one tool in the toolbox uh, that farmers and ranchers have to manage risk. We care a lot about making sure that it's available to operations of all shapes and sizes and that includes organic operations. So the guide is called Conversations from the Field, Crop Insurance for Organic Operations, and it came about after hearing from farmers and industry professionals that there were limited resources on the topic, specifically of organic. Um, and of course, it's also a timely topic. This year's deadline to purchase crop insurance for most spring crops will be March 15th, so maybe top of mind for some of you watching. And not only that, but there's been a lot of change um, in this realm. Uh, we know that crop insurance for organic has expanded quite considerably in the past decade. Prior organic farmers could only insure their crops at conventional prices. So if you had organic corn, for example, um, per bushel, you were only insuring at conventional prices, which we know isn't really insuring the actual value out there in an organic farmer's field. Um, but now there are over 80 certified organic crops that can be insured at higher organic prices and also a number of unique options and considerations for organic. So the guide details these options through interviews. So we got to speak with 14 knowledgeable individuals, uh, seven crop insurance agents and seven organic farmers across the Midwest. So I spoke with folks in Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, Minnesota, and Kansas. Um, and really kind of made it a conversational guide. Um, so they you know, told me a bit about their background um, and then we delved into some of those important topics that are specific to organic. Also, these interviews brought out some really unique perspectives. Um, for example, we had an agent who specializes specifically in organic crop insurance. Um, we had a Nebraska farmer who is also a crop adjuster and has that kind of dual perspective as a farmer who buys it and then an adjuster that's coming out in the event of a loss. Um, and I spoke with an Iowa farmer who was reflecting on crop damage he had with the 2020 derecho that came through Iowa um, and certainly had a lot of producers thinking about crop insurance. Um, so from the feedback from agents to farmers, um, this guide really could benefit a wide range of audiences. Um, certainly beginning or transitioning organic farmers, also experienced organic farmers, or even crop insurance agents trying to better understand their organic customers and kind of where they're coming from. So the guide is available at cfra.org slash publications, um, and I think my colleague is also going to put it in the chat section here. Um, and we will have opportunity for questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and I love to, to talk about them. Um, as I said, I also would like to just talk about a few topics detailed in the guide, just to give you a sampling of what you might be wanting to keep in mind if you're an organic farmer. Uh, so the first is ensuring organic crops at higher prices. So we know that organic producers work really hard to manage their crop and they have unique risks. Um, and they need to be protected at a level equivalent to the prices they get for their grain. It really comes down to, are you actually ensuring the value that's out there in the field? And why that matters is that in the event of a loss, you'll file a claim and likely get an indemnity payment. But if you're not insuring near or at the full revenue, then that payment's really not going to cover what your crop is worth or what your loss actually was. When I say cover, I'm talking about the 50 to 85% coverage level that you choose with your agent um, that's available for most federal multi peril crop insurance policies. And that's kind of the general policy that's used by most folks in the Midwest um, with grain operations. So there's sort of two options here. 
One is what's called organic price elections. This is probably the most commonly known. Um, so these are prices set per unit, so per bushel, for example, by the federal government um, for more than 80 certified organic crops. And so this is how you would ensure your revenue. It's pretty straightforward. They're going to look at your actual production history or the history of your yields um, or what you should expect to grow. And then they multiply that by price, by that unit price, and that's the revenue that they're actually looking at. And so if you're going to cover at 80%, for example, you're looking at 80% of that total number that you calculated. The other sort of lesser known option here is what's called contract pricing or the contract price option. This is available for certified organic crops and also crops in transition. So if you have a contract set for a particular crop, you can ensure that crop using the contract price instead of the organic price election. And in the instance that the contract price is higher, this can be really beneficial. Um, there is kind of a high, like a limit uh, cap for the dollar amount, but certainly you can um, be insuring at higher prices. Um, so as I said, this is available for certified organic uh, crops and also crops in transition. Um, those in transition know and those who've gone through it that those can be certainly uh, economically straining years. And so this option could allow someone to ensure higher prices, even if it's not certified organic yet. So if you have a non-GMO grain contract, for example, you can ensure using the contract price. Another thing that came through in the interviews and that's in the guide is a conversation about unit types. Uh, so units are how a policy is organized. In other words, how a policy is segmented between farms or sections or just kind of how they look at your operation. Um, the three most commonly used unit types for row crops are enterprise units, optional units, and basic units. Enterprise units take into account the entire crop planted and they combine all fields together. And it's also the most federally subsidized unit type, so that means it's the cheapest. Um, whereas optional and basic units split up the operation a bit, so by farms, crops, things like that. In one of our interviews, a farmer talked about why and how he switched from enterprise units to basic units. And the reason he did that is because if he had a bad year in one section or one field or one farm with enterprise units that kind of look at the whole thing together, other fields that did fine or did well might cancel it out and he wouldn't be eligible for a claim. But with basic units that are kind of looking at individual sections, that field might trigger a claim because it's looking at it at the smaller scale and it might trigger a loss at that scale. So this may be a consideration for organic, um, specifically if you have variability between fields. Another thing that came up in almost every interview was finding a good agent and just that it's really critical to find a good agent, especially for organic. Um, so someone who knows something about organic, um, I had a farmer tell me, you know, if someone's eyes are kind of glazing over when you're talking about your rotation or different things, um, maybe try to find someone else. Um, and also who's willing to sit down with you, take the time, you know, run your numbers and chat for your options. Um, who's not just kind of trying to fit you in a one size fits all policy. Um, another thing to note is that federal crop insurance is set by the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Risk Management Agency, RMA. Um, so that includes all of the metrics, the dollar amounts, etc. Um, so no one agent can offer you a better premium price or some sort of special deal, uh, at least for federal policies. So what really differentiates them and what you're looking for is what service they can provide. Um, there are also a, a number of ways to look for an agent. Uh, there's an agent locator tool, which I'll put in the, the comments here. Um, that's a way to kind of look for someone in your area, or I believe they have some different specialization uh, pieces on there as well. Um, but the feedback really from my interviewees was just talk with your organic uh, farmers in your area, talk with your you know colleagues and friends, see who they work with. Um, if they like who they're working with, that might even be a, a better a route to take. Um, kind of lesser known is that you don't have to work with an agent who's geographically close to you as long as they're licensed in your state. Uh, so it might be a better fit to find someone specialized in organic or someone who you, you know, click with and like working with. If that's not the person down the street or in town, that's okay. Um, with technology today, you really can work with them just fine. Um, as long as they have that, that license to work in your state. So like I said, 
These are kind of three topics we touch on, ensuring at those higher organic prices, thinking about unit types, thinking about finding a good agent. Um, but the guide covers a whole lot more. Um, we touch on things like the claims process, the crop insurance timeline, uh, you know, when you need to contact an agent, when you need to get your organic certification documents in, things like that. Um, we talk about what to do if a crop can't be insured in your particular county and kind of what are your options there and a lot more. Um, so once again, this guide is available at CFRA.org slash publications, and I really encourage you to check it out. Um, if you want to chat with me uh, or would like a hard copy sent in the mail, give me a call or, or email me. Um, I think we'll put my contact information in the comments as well. Um, but would always love to chat about this topic and uh, you know answer any questions you have. And yeah, I don't see any questions here, but if you have questions live, please put them in the comments. I'll stay on for a few more seconds or minutes and uh, appreciate the those of you who are able to join. Awesome, I don't see any more questions. So like I said, if you do have some, please reach out to me. Uh, email or phone is fine and I'd be happy to chat. Thank you so much, have a great day.